add on to it there. But I like his uh, plan for the three phases. You know, the roof, if we don't fix the roof, it's gonna be a total demolition project. And then the bathroom, the concession, and outside work there. And uh, city treasurer uh, added a few paper here. Mike was asking for $12,000 for the capital improvement. And then the capital project funds to repair the roof. And then she mentioned after reviewing the budget in the capital improvement fund, there's $100,000 budgeted for a LPA street project that has been canceled. I don't know what LPA is, but it's been canceled. So some of the budget money would be available at the council's discretion to be used for the above mentioned project. Act. And I asked Mike, the demolition around the building would be conducted by your crew? Yes. Okay, and then uh, this is a building that the pub will go in, you'll have to have a like a contract. Contractor, yes. Okay, thank you. I think, uh, I think it's a great idea. Um, and certainly if we could get that roof fixed before another winter Absolutely. wears on that building more. Uh, is there any other discussion on this? I'd like to add, Mr. Mayor. The one thing you know the downtown revitalization project, they have the Broadband Park Center as one of the hubs, so we have to have a, a restroom and a concession stand. But I think it's really vital to uh, get this project started. I've had a number of people ask me about the state of that bathroom as well. Is this something that, that if approved, they could get done prior to winter setting it? The roof, yes. Okay, perfect. Any other discussion on this item or questions of Mike Craig? Uh, we have a second and a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried and so ordered. Uh, with that, we'll move back into public comment. Any public comment, please approach the podium and state your name for the record. Carrie Pintar, 1417 Mill Street. Um, again, Mayor Robinson, I'm going to ask this question because it was not on my list. We've hired three White Pine County assistant DAs, two criminal and one civil, for the cost of $9,170 per month. I want to know what we're paying them for. I was absent at that meeting when you folks all decided to hire three attorneys to replace Mr. Rogers. And don't take me wrong, Mr. Rogers was not my friend. <laughs> I, I was not in support of him. He was a workhorse. I'm just not sure we're getting the same from the attorneys that we've hired. I question how it is when they are working full-time 40 hours a week for White Pine County, what is it that they're doing for the city and when is it that they're doing it? Because by my recollection, court works from 8 a.m. to, or 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So where are we getting all these hours out of these attorneys that we're paying them for? They're, if they're representing us at the county, I'm paying for that in my taxes. The city is now paying them, and what are we getting from it? When I called to check today down to the, the recorder's office, there was one deed record, or the last lien release was recorded on August 30th, which you signed, Nathan. The one before that, which was filed, was August 22nd. There hasn't been anything done this month and filed on behalf of the city. So for Mr. Piles, we're paying him $4,170 a month to attend two meetings which he's obviously fallen down on the job for when he didn't speak up last week to represent you and cause you from creating the media storm that ensued. I just think that we need to revisit that. If again, this is your idea of it's a part-time job, then we need to find a part-time attorney. Three part-time attorney, part attorneys are not doing the city justice and we're paying a lot of money to have them. And I'm gonna go back, I have nothing against Mrs. Beecher, I think it's great you appointed her. You guys made her mayor pro tem, put her on the bank accounts, given her free reign, great. But then we need to get rid of Mr. Beecher. Again, it's a conflict of interest. So I'm asking you to take a look at the attorney services and figure out something different because this isn't working for the residents of the city as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Mike Wiggle for the record, White Pine County District Attorney. Um, when Mr. Rogers resigned, there was a hole left in the city for legal services. My attorneys work more than 40 hours a week for our office. Brian Pyle hasn't slept in over a week and a half. He's doing everything he can to help the city. There's a vacuum in our community of attorneys, believe it or not. And um, Mr. Beecher's here. <clears throat> and he has something for you that eliminates some of the concerns of Ms. Pintar. But actually, there is no conflict unless there's um, something for the board that Ms. Beecher has to vote for on behalf of Mr. Beecher. And in those cases, she can accuse herself. So there's no actual legal conflict. 
<clears throat> I can tell you from doing county commission meetings for about five or six years now, you never know what's going to come out of a council member <laughs> or a commissioner's mouth with a question, and it would be really nice to be able to meet with them ahead of time. And uh, I know um, Mr. Pyle is an expert in the law of open meeting law and ethics. I mean, he's who I consult with. And um, sometimes questions come out and we say it and then we go, well, I wish I would have framed that differently. That's not what I meant. And sometimes we address it and we recognize our mistakes. Um, but that's not Mr. Pyle's failure. Let's put personal responsibility where it belongs. It's on us. We're responsible for what we say in public. Um, I'm going to advise my attorneys to all resign from the city because we are trying to help the city. We are trying to work together with the city. And I don't know who's going to step up and do these services. The other three attorneys in town all have a full-time public defender job. It's a real difficult situation we're in. Um, I'd encourage Mr. Pyle to think about resigning by giving a 30 to 60 day notice so that you guys can have time to find someone because you definitely need a civil attorney. Um, my prosecutor, Mackenzie Peterson, is not here today. She may stay on to help with the city prosecutions until they find a new attorney as well. Thank you for your comments, Mike. And I would just like to say that it is about time that you, uh, I would second everything Mike Google said, and that uh, you all should be looking for a full time uh, attorney because we will be uh, submitting our resignation here shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? I just wanted to clarify the record a bit. Um, every time we have had um, a past due balance paid off, uh, Attorney Pyle has taken care of that same day. He has whipped that around um, for, the, for the mayor to sign. Um, the log jam is with me. Um, I just recently um, acquired my administrative assistant who's been doing a phenomenal job, but we're still playing catch up. And so those lien releases that attorney Pyle prepared the same day are in a basket in my office to be taken care of as soon as I can, hopefully tomorrow. I've been out of town this week. So he is doing his job. He is accessible. Um, whenever we need him, um, we've had to text him, we've emailed him, um, he always gets right back to me. And so I, I've been very grateful for his legal counsel and I think he's been doing a great job. Thank you for your comment, Jennifer. Any other public comment? Crystal, please. I actually had a um, letter that was, was written and said that I just wanted to say that, you know, everyone makes mistakes. I'm glad that you guys came forward and said that, you know, you're sorry. And I feel like even attorneys make mistakes. Um, it would be really sad to kind of see a bunch of people just resign and whatnot just because of a mistake. And I feel like you guys have stepped forward and owned up to it. I appreciate it. I'm sure everyone appreciates it. So, anyway, thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, you're contemplating changes to allow mobile home parks to allow RVs uh, for the benefit of the construction people coming in. You're forgetting that local citizens are also having trouble. I've lost four tenants simply because of your rules, your selective enforcement of your rules. Now for you to do this strictly for a so-called class, that's not going to get it. You have to also address the concerns of this community, and you're not doing that. Perhaps you'll do it later, but I want you to know you need to address it, and I'm going to be back. I've got property that I can't rent. I've lost four different contracts, yet all around me there are people renting to RVs, to fifth wheels, to motor homes, but you have nothing better to do than look at where old George is and then sign it. This is the second one I've got. I've not had to pay because I've told the renter to leave, yet your building inspector is not enforcing the rules and regulations fairly. That needs to stop. Mr. Mayor, uh, a new sidewalk was installed alongside the North 
West side of the railroad track, city code specifically states sidewalks must be of concrete, Portland cement, not asphalt. You need to correct the error. We have rules and regulations or we don't. Stop the discrimination. Why do you have staff going out and selectively enforcing the law? You know what the code is, and yet you look the other way. That needs to stop. Mr. Mayor, the city is having uh, worked on an av on Avenue A. Avenue A is private property. You cannot, by law, improve private property. You're violating the law. Why are you doing that? I brought that up before. There's no disclosure from any of you people or your staff. You can't continue to do that. Mr. Mayor, uh, as the 490 linear feet of 16-inch steel pipe from the Marine Street Project been returned to the city for proper sale, if you're going to sell that pipe, Mr. Mayor, it needs to be open to the public. No swat, sweetheart deals for any city employees. This has been on, going on for some time. I want an answer. That's a lot of money there, Mr. Mayor. You can't just throw it away. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I reported to you going back to July and August, uh, EV Planning Commission meetings also, that there were approximately six to eight Airbnbs operating in the EV area and more in the county. That information came to me from attending White Pine County Turn and Rec meetings. Those Airbnbs are operating illegally. They are conducting a commercial enterprise in a residential zone. To date, no one has applied for home occupation, zone change, variance, and or an appeal. They don't pay commercial thank land you, rates. Thank you, George. I want some answers, Mr. Mayor, and I'll thank you. Is there any further public comment? Hey, Jessica Trask again, and Mr. Carson, I just wanted to say thank you for your apology. Uh, Michelle, thank you and good luck. Thank you. Any other further public comment? Seeing none, we'll close public comment and move to adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Sure. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Carried and so ordered. This has been a Georgetown production, George Chat just reporting.